Good morning, everyone. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you so much for watching. So today I'm going to take you guys with me on a 12-hour call. Yeah, I'm not about that 24-hour call life anymore. Actually, after my third daughter, I stopped taking 24-hour calls and um, I do late calls so they can last anywhere between 10, 11 to even 18 hours. So let's see how this day goes and come along. Hey guys, so I am heading in for my call today. Um, I know one of the um, comments left on one of my previous videos asked me to do a day in the life 24 hour trauma call, a 24 hour call as an anesthesiologist. So I'm gonna bring you guys along with me. So basically when you're on call, you just go in from case to case and take care of emergencies as they may arise. So you have to be ready. You have to be on alert always and um, thinking of a plan as you're going toward seeing that patient because as soon as you get there, you're gonna have to get into action as far as like fixing any issues or treating the patient or getting them off to sleep quickly. So I'm heading in to see the next patient. They've already called to tell me the patient's waiting for me, so I gotta rush. I just got a text and a call that there's a, an emergency stroke coming in. So I need to report to the interventional radiology suite to go and assess the patient and actually get the procedure started. So the procedure that we're going to do is called a thrombectomy. And that's basically when you remove a clot that is causing the stroke, usually it's a clot or some type of a plaque in the artery, the arteries that supply the brain. And so what they do is they use CT scans and look at that area and use instruments to remove the clot. Halls at my hospital can get very busy. Like I didn't get a chance to eat lunch or I didn't get a chance to use the bathroom busy. You have to try to make time for yourself even when you're running. So I just finished a procedure and when you're on call, you just go from one procedure to the next, trying to finish all the cases before the overnight shift begins. So I'm heading into hour 12 of my call. I'm starting to slow down a little bit, but coffee, I'm gonna have some of that and keep it moving. So now we have a um, surgery going on. It's gonna be emergency removal of a foreign body that got trapped into someone's eye. They were probably working on something and maybe a piece of like a shard of glass or a shrap shrapnel from something that exploded usually ends up in the um, eye socket or in the globe. And so it's emergency surgery. You have to remove it and try to see if you can repair the eye as soon as possible. So that requires general anesthesia and you have to work pretty quickly to get that done. Now I'm just going through to make sure the OR is ready before I bring the patient in. Almost ready. Almost. Yeah. Okay. All right. So wait a few minutes and come in then. Yeah. Okay. So it's all about coordinating and communicating and making sure everybody knows what's going on and making sure you're prepared for your case. So now I'm heading in to do a case that is an emergency uh, crany. So this is, a crany is a brain surgery and it's basically when you remove the skull to get rid of a tumor or mass or something that is causing um, extra pressure inside the skull. So whenever we have cranies when I'm on call, they're usually done in a very stat or emergent fashion. So we have to move pretty quickly, get the patients into the operating room as soon as possible, get them positioned and get the procedure going as as fast as we can. So as anesthesiologists, your role is really crucial. You're the person that is pretty much limiting the start of life-saving procedure. So you need to do what you usually do at like a rapid speed. So your intubation, putting in IVs or even other monitoring lines has to be done really quick. So that's why building your skills up is important, especially if you work in a trauma center and you'll be very comfortable doing these kinds of cases. And they're actually very exciting and I'm happy. So 
it's finally the end of my call shift. I'm gonna be um, leaving the hospital and going home for the night. So happy to be going home. I'm so exhausted. <laughs> I'm gonna go home and get some rest. And then tomorrow, luckily, after call shift, um, post call, I get out early the next day. So I'm excited about that. I still find taking call pretty draining and, and exhausting, especially knowing that even after I'm done with my 14 or 18 hour day, I have to go home and deal with my kids but it's part of being a good clinician and um, staying competent and strong.